What's up guys, welcome to my studio here in Iceland. I have with me the Inspire 3 from DJI. I've been flying it for the last few weeks prior to its launch and as the software has developed. I have a lot to say about this drone. I've been using the Inspire 2 for many many years now as a professional cinematographer working in the space of natural history doing a lot of filming of nature and over the last few weeks with this new Inspire 3 I've gained quite a lot of experience that I want to share with you some thoughts on different elements of the drone and how it's really helped me to push to the next level of filmmaking. Now I'm sure many of you have read the spec sheet so I'm not going to go really technical and list everything I just want to share some meaningful facts and things that I've found to be useful with the drone. The first thing that I want to talk about is the new camera camera in the drone. The X9 Air 8K sensor, it is RAW capable and can film in ProRes RAW 75 frames per second and in Cinema DNG up to 25 frames per second. I was really stoked when I saw that Cinema DNG was going to be available for this drone because I am so used to filming in that format with the Inspire 2. But actually having 75 frames per second in ProRes RAW, that has been my go-to for at least all of my testing. I have had to transcode the footage from Final Cut where that can actually read ProRes RAW. I do some white balance tweaking, actually convert it into Rec 709 there. I've then been exporting that out into ProRes 422 HQ and dropping that into DaVinci Resolve where I begin to color grade. It's a little bit of a clunky workflow, but I'm really, really impressed with the footage. The dynamic range on this camera is just, it is mind blowing, 14 plus stops. And I've been pushing the footage as far as I can and it just doesn't break. I feel like the sensor in the X7 on the Inspire 2 was already pretty incredible, but this really is just a whole new league of possibility for the grade. And as someone who really loves to grade my footage and to sculpt the color and aesthetic into a certain way that fits my style, I really feel like the Inspire 3 has enabled me to do the grades that I've been able to create in photography, I can now fully translate into video. And that is just an amazing opportunity to push my style into the cinema world and it just makes it exciting to use this drone. Throughout my shoots, I've been mostly filming in 60 frames per second. And what is actually really cool is we now have the ability to pick the project and the sensor frame rates. I actually made a mistake on my first day. For some of my favorite shots, I had the sensor and project frame rates back to front. That led to my footage actually being sped up. So when my friend was on the glacier, he was walking at hyper speed and the drone was flying super fast. But because it was in project frame rate of 60 frames, I was able to at least slow it back to real time. So luckily I could save that footage, but do keep an eye out actually on any camera you use to make sure you have those set the right way. Having shutter angle is also very cool. I have found that I've gone back to using shutter speed because I had limitations on my first shoots with the NDs that I took with me and I needed to push past that 180 degree shutter angle. But provided that you have the right lighting conditions and the right filters available, having the shutter angle is just so nice. It's like a mindless thing. It's something you don't have to think about. One less thing enabling you to just focus on composition and getting the sequences done. I really do wish this camera had internal NDs. That is quite a bummer to have to rely on screwing them on. In saying that, we can push the aperture really far and get quite a lot out of even using no NDs on the camera itself. On the Inspire 3, we no longer have to crop in to go into slow motion. And that was really frustrating on the Inspire 2 because you are used to a certain focal length and how that looks. And just to go to 60 frames per second, I would have to go to 4K and it would crop all the sides off and zoom you in and then you have to recompose and think differently how you're using those lenses. And it was quite a significant change. I really like that now we just have a set frame we can go over from slow motion or real time without sacrificing our composition. That leads me on to the dual native capability of this sensor. We have the ISO of 800 and 4000 as beautiful, clean native ISOs. And that changes everything. This really hasn't been possible in previous generations of DJI drones in general. 
and usually as it gets dark, I'm forced to land and find other means to go and film. With the Inspire 3, I actually did a test on a glacier I had my friend walk out in the blue hour, which is some of the most beautiful soft light and in these transitional times of year in Iceland, it is a longer period of time. So I was really able to push the camera and explore the potential of this dual native ISO. In the earlier part of the blue hour at 4,000 ISO, the footage is almost crystal clear. Like so crazy to be able to film at such a high ISO and come home with beautiful clear 8K footage. As the light started to fade, and we were flying in almost pitch black darkness. I could barely see walking back to the car. In that footage, I did notice a slight amount of noise, but it honestly is nothing that Da Vinci couldn't fix for me with some noise reduction. And after I applied that, it was almost seamless. From the native 800 to the 4000 ISO footage, I feel like the colors were still there, rich and vibrant and able to be pushed in whichever way I like. Even at 4000 ISO, I felt that I could really harness the full potential of this sensor. It is so mind blowing where we've got to with drones. Like, I really just feel like this is the beginning. The next thing that I want to talk about is the signal on long range flights, the transmission. The RC Plus controller is equipped with the O3 image transmission system. I've experienced just a whole different world of flying. With the Inspire 2, I had to upgrade to the Sendence controller and this big patch antenna just to have somewhat of clear transmission up from one to two kilometers away. And even then there was just this element of this lack of trust that I had with that drone. And many times I did lose signal right when I needed the drone to be working in those very special moments when something is waiting to be captured and you have to mess around with settings and the screen is going black and it's just not doing what you want. That leads to a lot of frustration. And I feel like the Inspire 3 has just fixed it completely. I did a test flight at a outlet glacier called Breidamokuyogut, quite the name. And that is around four kilometers from where I was able to park my car. And this was simply just not possible before. I would have had to strap the Inspire 2 to my backpack and hike out on a glacier mission just to get these shots. And now, especially with the increased battery performance, I'm able to fly all the way out and in just a couple of flights with different lenses, I can build a complete sequence telling the story of the glacier and the signal is flawless and really just opens up that feeling of trust between the operator and the drone itself. When you can bridge that gap and you're no longer thinking about things like the signal dropping out and so on, you can just focus on nailing the sequence, nailing the shots that you're trying to get. And I feel like that makes a big difference. The RC Plus controller itself, this is my first time using it and it's definitely a new feeling. It's a slightly different layout and shape. So that took a bit of getting used to. I really love how the controller can rest up against my body with, I guess you'd call them support legs that come out. And with the new strap as well, I feel like it sits very nice. And as I said, after I got used to the shape and the feeling of it, I feel like it makes sense. Another thing that I really like about the controller is everything that I need to do button wise is right there in a way that I can push with gloves on. And being in such a cold climate, that makes a big difference. In the back of the controller, you can mount an auxiliary battery. It actually saved me one time when the controller itself was low on battery and I was in the air. I was able to put an extra battery in the controller and that hot swappable effect allows you to be infinitely powered if you have enough battery. So for me, that just enables kind of like a backup fail safe mechanism. When looking at the stability of the gimbal itself on the X9 8K Air camera, it is remarkably refined in comparison to the Inspire 2. And the way that I've been able to establish that thought is by looking at the 50 millimeter footage. And on the Inspire 2, I often struggled, especially with any amount of wind. I found that the gimbal would start to shake and you would have visibly noticeable shake in the footage. It kind of takes over and it's quite distracting. So I just wouldn't use those shots. With the Inspire 3 and the 50 millimeter lens, I haven't experienced any shake. I haven't tried it yet in extreme wind, but I have had it up in moderate wind and the footage is just perfectly stable. And that gets a big thumbs up because just like with the transmission, this is one less thing that I have to think about when I'm out trying to nail a sequence 
I can just be focused on getting it done. So on the Inspire 2, it was really hard to fly in a straight line. You would experience a lot of times where the gimbal itself would start to drift on the roll axis or side to side and especially low flying. It was really, really difficult. I feel like the X9 Air has eliminated those stresses. When you need it to fly low and straight, it's just gonna fly low and straight. Just like on the Ronin 4D and the Inspire 2, this camera uses the DL mount DJI lenses. We now have the 18 millimeter, which is a brand new lens, and then the 24, 35, and 50. For the first day of flying, I didn't actually have an ND for the 18 millimeter. I didn't realize that it's actually a bigger filtering. I think it's 55 millimeters. And I was stopping this lens down to some crazy numbers like F22 and beyond. And I have noticed that the 18 millimeter suffers a little bit from a vignette. And I don't think it really matters what aperture I used. I do find the edges to be quite noticeably darker and in the grade I had to brighten those up in quite a few occasions where I needed to push the footage quite hard in the grade. So that is one thing to consider but in saying that the 18mm has been incredibly sharp and just like the other lenses I do highly rate these lenses. I mean I've used all kinds of cinema glass and I know that these lenses on the Ronin 4D kind of get laughed at because they're so small and they look like I guess amateur lenses but they are so sharp and really amazing. They even have depth of field so I rate them really highly and they get the job done for me. Let's talk a little bit about the batteries and the charging situation with the Inspire 3. There was a lot of speculation whether this drone would use the TB50, the legendary battery that powered the Inspire 2, the Ronin 2 gimbal, the Ronin 4D, but then we unexpectedly received the TB51, a brand new battery with a different mount so they're not cross compatible. We have on the charger, which is an insane piece of technology in itself, the ability to charge two batteries to 90% in just 35 minutes, meaning I don't need as many batteries and they're really expensive so by being able to minimize on the investment on those and rely on that charging possibility I'm able to by the time I've used the third set essentially have the first set ready to go again. I carry with me an EcoFlow that I leave in the car so when I arrive to a shoot location after the first flight is done the batteries go on charge second third and then the batteries are ready to go from the first flight. The charger itself now has slots for eight batteries. So essentially it is two chargers in one compared to the TB50 charger. For the Inspire 3, we have a new SSD. It is the same as what's in the Ronin 4D, which is quite nice to have that cross compatibility. It lives in the top of the drone. It is one terabyte and blazing fast USB-C connection straight into the computer. So we no longer need to use this card reader, which often led to frustration for me. I didn't have the USB-C one and it often unmounted itself. There is one thing we've been talking a little bit about here in Iceland because it often can just start raining out of nowhere or you fly into a cloud, the drone gets a bit misty. Because the SSD lives in the top of the drone, we have been questioning the ability for some water or moisture to leak down through the cover, but it is watertight, it is fully sealed. So I'm gonna trust that for now and so far so good. In an area a little bit outside of my expertise of dual operation, the new FPV camera has enabled a new level of trust between the drone operator and the drone itself. And I actually went out and we did a car shoot with my Jeep where I had a friend who is a really experienced dual operator pilot join me and I was controlling the gimbal, he was controlling the drone. And from what I've learned from him, there is a hugely increased low light capability and that increased transmission with the new O3 system allows for a new level of control and trust with the drone itself, flying low and in tight, difficult conditions. Coupling with that, we have a brand new omnidirectional obstacle sensor all around the drone, meaning that it is now possible to fly in very tight conditions and you have way more trust that it's gonna find its way through. I have experienced that it is a little bit harder to land the drone. It is a little bit more of a situation where I need to put the landing pad further away and make sure there is no big obstacles around or I have to go to sports mode and then the drone, of course, will turn off the sensors and it will land much easier. For storage, we of course have this new roller case, much like a suitcase for the drone. Whilst it is bigger than the Inspire 2, 
it's super organized it just it makes total sense how the layout is and in daily use it is really nice and i especially like being able to wheel it out of the car and into a hotel room or back into my studio where i begin to edit it also feels very strong and sturdy so i would trust checking it in no problem in my experience for cinematography this drone enters a new field above and beyond the Mavic and I've had some people get in contact saying you know the footage you've shot I could have done it just as easily on a Mavic and in many cases you probably could do that. The footage you've seen at least in my short films from the Inspire 3 has had quite a heavy grade added and the footage from other types of DJI drones would fall apart in those situations where I'm pushing it so far. So I think there is for me a clear distinction in possibility between the Mavic and the Inspire footage and really it just comes down to what your end goal is. I'm often employed as a professional cinematographer working on shoots for Netflix and the BBC and this drone or the highest quality possible is simply just the requirement and the investment in the drone itself will quickly pay itself back. So for that alone, it is just the right drone to go to for those shoots. But in many instances, I totally agree that the Mavic can do the job. And you really have to ask yourself, is this something that's gonna pay itself back? Is it practical for my shooting environment? And is that increased 8K, 14 stops of dynamic range actually necessary for me to achieve those shots that I'm hoping to achieve? So I hope that gives you a little bit of understanding of my experience with the Inspire 3. And I really appreciate you all watching the short films that I've been making and just being here on my YouTube channel. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to go out and field test things like this new drone and be able to share that experience with you guys. So thank you for being here and please subscribe to my channel if you're interested to see more. I live here in Iceland and I travel regularly all across the Arctic and the Antarctic. Thank you so much for watching.